focus in the United States on research ethics began with the uh, news of the uh, research done by Nazi physicians on concentration camp prisoners during World War II. Uh, there was a war crimes trial held in the city of Nuremberg, which produced the Nuremberg Code, the first international code of ethics uh, for research on human subjects. In the United States, interest in the topic was reawakened in the mid to late 1960s when we got reports of uh, unethical research being done, including the Tuskegee syphilis studies, or some of the key uh, cases that attracted the attention of the United States Congress to the issue. Uh, they studied quite a number of other uh, suspected cases. And uh, in response to this, created a national commission uh, called the National Commission for the Protection of Human Research Subjects. One of its most famous products was uh, the so-called Belmont Report. I personally, as a consultant to the commission, was the co-author of the Belmont Report with uh, Tom Beecham, another consultant from Georgetown University. Uh, we had no idea when we wrote this thing of what influence it would have. We thought it might guide the development of regulations in the United States, but instead it became uh, the standard declaration of ethical principles for research, not only in the, in the United States, but in most of the rest of the world. And although we must be evolving our ethical standards in order to be responsive, not only to the technological, but other uh, standards, evolution of other considerations relevant to the time. But we have to be on guard against what I call the appearance of infinite malleability. That is, we'll change the ethical codes any way that's necessary in order to allow the science to go forward. That's something that I believe we cannot do. We cannot simply be responsive to the technological demands of scientific development, but we must give them due consideration and come out with standards that are responsive to all the relevant considerations of the time and place.